Hello everyone and welcome to another video from the Tiny Menagerie. Feeding fresh fry can be a little bit of a challenge, especially if you have either very very small fry or if you're struggling to find a reliable source of baby brine shrimp. In fact, in many ways micro worms are, in my opinion at least, a little bit easier to use than baby brine shrimp as they can be kept in a constant culture that once established can be grown indefinitely and are always available to you, and they don't need to be hatched out or replaced, which is ideal if you only have a sporadic number of baby fish. Plus, they are taken up just as readily by both fry and older small fish, and you can give them that same boosting growth that you would get with other protein and fat-heavy foodstuffs. And also, for your basic culture, you only need to have a few easily available materials in order to get started. And the first thing to do, of course, is you will want to purchase yourself a small colony of microworms, either from a fellow fish keeper who happens to be keeping them, or, most likely for most of us, from the internet. This can be any of the three varieties of tiny little nematodes we commonly keep and refer to as microworms, so either banana worms, walter worms, or the microworms themselves. And once these arrive, you are ready to start setting up their culture to grow them a bit more. And the second step is to get hold of an airtight container. This doesn't need to be very big, and personally, I don't bother putting air holes in the container neither, as the worms live in a slowly decomposing, stagnant pool of bacteria that is growing on a substrate. So, not only do the words not need a very high concentration of oxygen, so long as you open the tub once every three months or so, they will get plenty of oxygen for themselves, but they're also quite smelly, with quite a strong acidic odour. That, while I don't actually find it all that unpleasant, you probably aren't going to want that smell in your house, so an airtight tub is best. Also, having air holes can make the substrate quite prone to drying out, and this will definitely kill off the worms. They need a moist environment in order to move around and breed. And step three of this process is your worms will need a substrate in order to live on. This is going to grow their food for them, which comes in the form of bacteria, and also gives them some way of moving around with enough surface area for them to cover. To do this, place about one centimetre of rolled oats or oatmeal or dried potato or anything really that's predominantly starch-based into the base of the container and then add enough water to the substrate so that it is just about moist. Not dripping, but not dry either. This will then break down and decompose over time and the worms will live on this and the bacteria that proliferates on it and they will be able to sustain themselves over time. You also don't need yeast because the culture is perfectly capable of growing its own bacteria for the worms to feed on, these wet oats will start to decompose in about a day or so, presuming they're in a reasonably warm environment, and that's going to immediately start feeding the bacteria and the colony. In fact, I found that adding yeast can be quite detrimental, because if it starts to produce too much alcohol, if it starts to ferment very quickly, then that will definitely kill off the worms, so it's better to just go without yeast and play it safe. And once your substrate is set up, you can simply plop on the worm culture, just bung it straight in there, and mix in gently with the substrate in order to distribute those worms all around their food for them. Pack the worm mixture down gently to remove any air bubbles, and then seal the lid and set aside in a darkish place that doesn't get too hot. Standard room temperature is absolutely fine. Basically, if you are comfortable at that temperature, then the worms will be too. And in about one week, you should have a thriving little worm colony that is growing very happily. And you can tell it is when those growing numbers of the worms start to climb up the sides and the walls of the container. And it's these climbing worms that you then feed to your fry, safe in the knowledge that most of the colony will be in the substrate, and so by only taking the climbing worms, you won't be depriving it too much, you won't be taking too many of them away. And so, in order to feed the fry, all you have to do is wipe the worms off the side. Personally, I tend to use a cheap paintbrush that I can easily dip into the fry water and wash the worms off. That way they will distribute around the tank nicely and the fry will be able to find them. And so, from this first setup, you shouldn't need to change the substrate in the worms for about three months. Though you will find that it slowly gets increasingly pungent as it ages. And if it starts to develop a slightly alcoholic aroma, or if you think the worms aren't reproducing as fast as you think they should be, then it's probably time to give them a substrate refresh. Which you can do simply by removing half of the substrate from the container, and then replacing this with fresh dampened oats. This will give the bacteria in the culture more decomposing material on which to feed. 
but if you find that you're having to refresh the substrate more than every three months, then you might want to change where you're keeping your worms, move them to somewhere that is a little bit cooler in order to slow down the rate at which the bacteria is growing. But kept like this, your microworm culture should live on indefinitely, so long as you just keep changing the substrate to make sure everyone keeps on getting fed. And this means that having this little container sitting somewhere in your fish room, you have always got food on hand in order to feed to any new fry, or if you just want to give growing fish that little bit of a protein boost. Anywho though, I hope you've enjoyed this little video all about culturing microworms. Happy fish keeping everyone, and I'll see you again soon. Bye bye!